First into the den, three determined entrepreneurs who are hoping that when it comes to delivering a killer pitch, practice makes perfect. It's just been non-stop preparation, pitches, due diligence. And wherever you go, their eyes are following you. Deborah, she's proper staring at me. We have a set structure as to what we're going to talk about. And we've briefed the best topics for each individual person. For this tight-knit trio... This is it, James. Words are often superfluous when it comes to expressing their vision for their business. We communicate visually, basically. We know when we look at each other, yeah, we can tell in those eyes, those daggers tell us <laughs> whether we're doing it right or not. <laughs> Hello, Dragons. I'm Darren Markwick, Managing Director of Parcel Boxes Installed. I'm Liam Stamp. I'm Operations Manager. I'm Brian Wilcox, and I'm the inventor of these parcel boxes. We are here today seeking £40,000 for a 15% equity share in our startup company. Have you ever come home to find a parcel on your doorstep if it hasn't already been stolen, letting everyone know you're not at home? Or you've had a parcel delivered to one of your neighbours and you need to go and retrieve it, wasting your valuable time? We have a patent protected anti-theft parcel delivery box which is courier agnostic and accepts multiple deliveries. If I can give you a quick demonstration. So, any courier can turn the handle and open the drawer, place the parcel inside, close the drawer, and it automatically gets delivered to the secure com compartment. And then with your key, you can retrieve it when you come home. With the parcel box, we genuinely believe we've created the future of mail, ensuring our customers, residential and commercial, never miss a parcel again. We'd like you to take a closer look at our products and we invite any questions. Many thanks. Have a quick look. Hoping for investment in their company that produces secure mailboxes for packages are Darren Markwick, Liam Stamp and Brian Wilcox. So, so if you... I open that... Yeah, turn the handle. Open the drawer. Put that box yes. in. That's it. It should drop in automatically. Yes. And it's concealed, so no-one knows the parcel's in there. They want £40,000 in return for a 15% stake in their business. This is a freestanding unit. Yes. Yeah. So, so this one's standalone, this is built in, and this one's for apartments. But Peter Jones thinks it's all looking a little familiar. I've got something similar at my house, actually, that takes parcels, and it's got a key lock, and it was built into the brick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my personal view is that this is already a very limited market in terms of its size and the potential. Because a typical home has just got enough space to have a letterbox. It's not going to go and have a filing cabinet near its outdoor area, is it? It's pretty much for people that are lucky enough to have either brick walls or nice big houses, isn't it? I wouldn't have said that. Well, yeah, Would you most, put that in the front garden? Well, most houses would have a front garden, yeah. yeah it'd look like somebody's left their filing cabinet outside. But that's what people are doing, Peter. Really? We're thinking about getting them vinyl wrapped, Peter, so it could blend in with the atmosphere. A vinyl wrap? Mm. People would have that in the garden? Yeah. It would look like a filing cabinet in your garden, though, wouldn't it? But it's convenience, isn't it? And maybe in, now it may look like that, but it won't be long before they blend in. At the moment, you have two bins and a recycling bin in your front garden. It doesn't look aesthetically pretty, but it does the job. Yeah, it's just that the possibility of having this in most homes, it's not currently feasible. Peter Jones is far from convinced of the aesthetic draw of these particular parcel boxes. Next up, Tej Lalvani, who wants to unwrap the company's share structure. So shall we start by figuring out how much you guys each own of the business? So I'm 79% shareholder. I have 1%. And I have 20%. Right, so just in terms of pricing, um, how much is the one which is installed in the bricks at the moment? 199. So how much does it cost to you? The cost to us is 70 USD. 70 is about 55 pounds. That's right, about yeah. that. You said you're a startup, yeah. but you have some sales, presumably. So, yeah. what have you done so, so far? So, um, we've actually been selling for about 10 months, um, of which our turnover is 21k. And in that time, we've supplied 68 boxes and we've provided 37 installations of the box. Can I just say something slightly strange? So, as, up to now, we've been two separate companies. Darren's company has sold 68 units, but my company's sold about 500 in UK and Europe, 
and another 500 in Japan, and then we're merging the companies together. So right, so what, what sort of business is your company doing at the moment? My company's been more, more in the inventive side of it, and then Darren and Liam have been the salespeople. Right, so the investment today would be in the combined company? Yes, yes, combined yes. Company. Right. yeah. And the IP will be held in that company yes, as well? Yes, yeah. that's correct. So when I asked you how much have you sold, you only said 68. Why did you So in the, our UK-based operations, uh, under parcel boxes installed, we have sold 68. However, because obviously we've only been actually selling them for 10 months, Brian was the inventor who obviously preceded that, and his figures go back a bit further. With two sets of figures to marry up, Tej Lalvani is having to work hard to get a clear picture of the sales. Now, it's to Kasuliman's turn to attempt to get a better understanding of the combined businesses. You've come here wanting 40 grand. It's a total startup, which I can understand, but you've made the thing very complicated. Based on our projections, um, so. so we... Okay, projections, let's sure. start. Yeah, sure. Year um, one. So um, we project a turnover of 63K. 63K? Yeah. Turnover? Yeah. This is purely parcel box figures, by the way. Brian's figures are separate. Now, I'm talking about going forward as a, the new collective business. Yeah. You've just sold me 63 grand. Yeah, yeah. So that going includes in... Brian's, that includes yours. Yeah, that, everything. That's, just, that's just our figures. No, Brian's got his separate figures as well, yeah. Huh? He's got his. Guys, like, guys, you've come in with three of you. You should have said, we're going to go in as one. And I've just asked for some figures for the next 12 months. Sure. And I'm assuming that the partnership or the amalgamation has happened. It hasn't yet, no. Oh, it hasn't? It hasn't happened. The, mer the merger hasn't happened. OK, so year two, which is the magic year. Yeah. So give me the magic figure. Uh, the turnover, 383. 383. This is not taken into account Brian's figures. No, oh, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but you've come in here, what would you expect? To say it includes two businesses in one. So, OK, what would the combined figures be? Like, for... for Last year, it was, it was £150,000 I right. turned over. OK. Um, so if I double it for next year, it'll be £300,000. Sorry, I'm sorry, I am having... I've got to stop, this is a shambles. Are you seriously expecting us to sit here and add all of your numbers together so we can work out for you whether or not you've got a business that might possibly work joined? I have never seen a presentation like this in the den. Have you actually spoken to each other before you walked through those doors? We did, yes. yes. Did you think about making a presentation that actually presented the business that we were going to invest in instead of expecting me to sit here and say, right, what's your bit of the business? Which year? What's the bit that you're talking? Let's add that together and let's see what's yeah. going forward. Yeah, no, I respect that. Oh, well, I'm, no, I'm not asking you to respect it because I've got to tell you, this is shambolic. I'm sorry about that, but we are at the moment we're two separate companies and... But you're not asking me to invest in two separate companies. You can't stand in here and say we're combining the business, but actually we're going to give you the two separate numbers. You're confused. I mean, you're completely confuddled. I haven't got any questions for you whatsoever. I could not possibly invest and spend my time trying to work out the confusion that you yourselves haven't bothered working out the other side of those lift doors. I won't be investing. I'm out. Deborah Meaden is unequivocal in her disdain of the entrepreneur's pitch and perhaps not surprisingly becomes the first dragon out. Will Peter Jones be any more forgiving? Well, that's put a very interesting atmosphere in the den. <laughs> and I actually couldn't agree more. It's embarrassing, isn't it? We, mm. we, we've been a bit naive. This is an embarrassing moment for you, we but it's... We quickly add the numbers up, surely. I think it's best that we just leave it there. Um, I'm out. The bit I don't understand in putting two businesses together is how you then ended up with 79% to you, Darren, and 20% to you, Brian. Mm -hmm. But, Brian, you've got the track record of a business that has sold yeah. 500 units in Europe, 500 units in Japan or yeah. something, yes. and you guys are just resellers, but you end up with 20% of the business and you, Darren, end up with 79%. It doesn't make sense. It would be in, um, an equal amount. 
between us. If you invest, <laughs> oh, after well, the like, merger, yeah, well, after the merger, if you invest, oh, it'll oh. be an equal amount. I can't us. believe this is happening. Well, you just said it was seventy nine twenty and one. That's what and it one. is at the moment. To be honest, I think the proposition is a disaster, let alone the investment that you've tried to present. I could ask you a trillion questions, but it'll all lead to the same thing, which means I'm out. Thank you. Confusion reigns in the den as Jenny Campbell's probing reveals discrepancies over the company's share structure. With three dragons now out of the picture, has Tej Lalvani got any chance of getting this pitch out of the doldrums? How can you not have this organised? This doesn't make sense. You guys haven't got a proper business. You don't know what the shareholdings are. You don't know what the sales are. And I can't be part of something like this, so I'm going to say I'm out. How do you feel? Got it. Could have went better. Look, guys, I'm going to be very straight with you. There is a problem. Unfortunately, you're not going to sort it out. For that reason, I'm not going to invest and I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. They started so optimistically, but the fault lines in their pitch soon began to appear. Oh, well, that's life. I'm absolutely speechless. It is shocking. You won't be doing a celebration dance in here. And it's created a seismic split in their new partnership. As Deborah said, it's a shambles, and, you know, I can't disagree with her. Based on what I've just experienced, I won't be merging with these two guys now, most definitely. And Brian's walking home. Yeah, you're fine. 